Hey, my name is Eric Stoff. I make music with my wife and my friends in a band called The Stoffs. And you are watching an episode of Little Flock Deconstructed. It's a video series in which I break down the songs and the stories behind the songs that are on my 2019 album, Little Flock. In this video, we are discussing the lyrics and the production of a song called Pasture. It's one of my favorites. It's very colorful and it is all over the place. If you haven't already, subscribe to this YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up, and then follow me on Instagram at Eric J. Stoff. The lyrics are all about relationships and my workaholism. So there's only one verse in the song, and it deals with how much of my life that I have spent working. But not just working, because I don't think work is a bad thing. In fact, I think work is a good thing. Uh, but I have the bad habit, an unhealthy habit, of obsessing over work and worrying about my productivity and being anxious about my efficiency and how much I get done. Becoming a dad has really made me realize how um, prone I am to uh, get locked in the everyday rhythm and the mundane, the to-do lists. It really made me realize how out of whack my priorities were, and they, they still are for sure, it's a work in progress, but really what's going to last when I die? What's going to be like the legacy that lives on past my years on earth? It's not going to be how productive I was or um, how many to-do lists I completed. It's going to be the lessons that I teach my kids and the, the children I'm able to raise up into adults and send off into the world. It's going to be my relationships with other people and the life that I'm able to breathe into them. That is what's going to last after I die. And if I'm lucky, maybe my music. So the chorus basically asks the question, how am I doing? And I'm not just asking Brooke and my kids, but anyone I'm in a relationship with. What comes to mind when you hear my name or when I say hello? What are those feelings? What are those first impressions when I say hello? Are you happy to see me? Do you dread me coming? What, when I walk out of a room, does it feel like a relief or are you sad to see me go? And the bridge of the song basically defends that sentiment and addresses people who might think you shouldn't care what other people think of you. I say, you may think I'm people-pleasing or undedicated. You might see me as wishy-washy or like a politician of sorts trying to win people over. But really, I am trying to pledge allegiance to the precious things of life, the investments that matter. Not a career necessarily, not society or cultural norms, but instead investing in relationships uh, with other people, investing in myself, the last line is family and good health and giving of myself, etc. I truly believe that relationships are far more valuable in the kingdom of God than money or success, achievement, fame, any of that. Definitely do not claim to be good at this, but it is a constant process of evaluating my priorities and where they are and reevaluating them to be more in sync with um, the values of the kingdom of God. And that is what pasture is all about, lyrically. Pasture started as the finger-picked chord progression that you hear in the intro, the what I would call the interlude, and the outro of the song. And the chord progression and electric lead line are both pretty similar to the first demo. I recorded that first demo on my phone when we were traveling for the holidays a few Christmases ago. I needed a break from family, so I went in the spare bedroom and luckily I had an electric guitar and an amplifier with me that I was trying to sell in Southern Illinois. So I picked up that guitar, that's the chord progression that came out, and I called it Pasture right off the bat. At that point, I was not thinking about this as an album called Little Flock, but I was interested in sheep and shepherding. So I called it Pasture, it didn't have anything to do with the lyrics that were eventually written for the song, so I changed it to striving at one point. I changed it to PI for uh, personal inventory, and I also changed it to work ethic, but none of them felt as right as pasture, so uh, the first name is what stuck. So there's the main chord progression, and then it goes to a big A to D chord progression in the chorus. I wanted it to sound very big and jubilant, um, to contrast the tension that you hear in the verse. Uh, there's also a pretty involved bass line in the chorus. Instead of just playing a simple root note bass line, 
I wanted to add a counter melody on bass, which I think is very important to that moment. I'm not sure when it happened, but at some point I added in that three part echo on the vocals, and that has really been a big part of the song for most of its life. Yeah, but how do you feel? How do you feel when you see me? Couldn't it be? Couldn't it be? to measure my life. Luke Cross is the one who came up with a different drum beat for the chorus. Instead of just the big crashes on the down beats that I had, um, he came up with those long extended drum fills that I loved. As soon as I heard them, I was like, yes, we need to do that instead. And that's it's because I'm not a drummer. They're very loose and they add to the celebration of the chorus while still being very rhythmic and very tight. The bridge is a wacky one, it's bonkers. But to get us into the bridge, I use that interlude between the first chorus and the bridge as kind of this time to um, introduce the fact that something weird is about to happen. So there's the main chord progression going on and Brooke and I are talking um, in the background and I put a ton of delay and reverb on it I had the idea of wanting random voices talking in the background, so I brought Brooke into the office and I just said, hey, we just need to talk about anything because I'm recording our voices, I just want this random sound, so we just need to talk, blah, blah, blah. And she started to get annoyed with me just speaking nonsense, and she was like, I know, I know! So that's what we're talking about in the background. And then there's a big affected lift on the master track that gets us into the downbeat of the bridge. In the bridge, there is a lot going on. Uh, let's start with the chord progression. It alternates between a D sharp diminished and a D sharp minor chord. Um, there's a lot of tension there, and then it, the relief chord is an F sharp minor. That chord progression is played by the OP1, some fuzzed out lead electric guitars. I had the idea for the drum part in the bridge while I was editing this song in the backseat of our car in Wyoming. Uh, we were on our way home from Yellowstone in July of 2018. I was in the backseat taking a break from driving and editing some music and I came up with that snare part that I consider pretty signature for the bridge. And Luke absolutely nails the drumming um, in that moment as well. The bass is pretty simple there but I feel like the drums and bass work together to really create this cool musical moment and it feels like, to me, um, kind of this wacky Paul McCartney kind of vibe going on there. There's also a pretty good amount of noise from the OP1. I'm using the cow effect and manipulating uh, my vocals as well as just some random keys parts. I'm saying, shepherd the flock of God among you, which is from 1 Peter 5 verse 2. I'm pretty sure, I don't really remember, um, I'm pretty sure this was during a late night recording session and I just Google searched shepherd verses in the Bible and just read one of the first ones that came up. For my vocals in the bridge, there's the main vocal track, then there's a track pitched an octave lower, and then there's a track where I'm just saying the consonants of the words with a ton of delay applied. And it has this really creepy texture to it when it's all put together. For Brooke's vocal, I had her do this really nasally ah part, and that's also kind of a nod to Paul and Linda McCartney. Linda has all sorts of weird um, vocal textures and vocal parts on the McCartney's first two records, and Brooke and I are both big fans of those. So Brooke is sliding down the notes and off the notes intentionally, and then I swell in some delay and reverb on her vocal tracks to kind of fill the space between her parts. So that is the bridge, um, and then it takes us into the second chorus. For the longest time, I had it return to just the big open crashes, the big open chord progression that was in the first um, chorus, but Ben Fuller came to me and he was like, it really needs to go somewhere. That second chorus really needs to go to a different place after a bridge like that. You can't just return to normalcy after that kind of a bridge. So I was messing around with it and what resulted is kind of this like Queen meets garage rock style for that last chorus. There are some fuzzed out electric guitar harmonies, really rocking guitars and bass, and Luke is just pummeling his drum kit 
which is kind of a pun because he used to be in a band called The Pummels. To start that last chorus, I added extra delay to my vocal and then I automated the wet and dry mix. So it kind of offers this deep breath um, between the bridge and the last chorus while Luke is do doing um, a, a build up on his snare. Yeah, so how does it feel? When you see me hey! And lastly, we end the song with the same chill chord progression that started the song. Lucas Winkler and I actually forgot to pull out the room mics from the mix, so you hear what sounds like a slap back delay on the kick drum. And it's because it is a slap back delay, those room mics were picking up the audio slightly delayed from the two microphones that were in and in front of the kick drum during that session. That's a lot to cover in one song. Pasture is one of the most involved and complicated songs production-wise on all of Little Flock, and it has really become a fan favorite as well. Um, it's a song that underwent a lot of change and a lot of transformation throughout the year, and it was also basically an Ableton experiment. And I love creating songs that way because it is so different, and the end result is always a little bit more bizarre or out of left field than what I would have written if I was just sitting down with an acoustic guitar writing in a more linear way. So thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope it's interesting to you to hear how a song as wacky as Pasture came to be. And I will see you next week with an episode on Down the Fell. It is the shortest track on Little Flock, so it'll be a short video as well. See you then.